Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. Last time we were talking about the equilibrium and talked about Kc constant. We said that as reaction proceeds, the reactant concentrations are used up while the products are produced. The reactant concentration graph shows a decreasing line while the products increase and at equilibrium the lines become horizontal because the rate of forward is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. That is exactly when we, f when we find the Kc value. Kc was the ratio of product concentration over the reactant concentration at a specific temperature. Kc expression has variable units. That is also something we talked about. In today's video, we are doing some past paper questions. So let's begin. The question says SO3 is produced by the reaction between SO2 and O2 in the contact process. A dynamic equilibrium is established. Explain why increasing the total pressure at constant temperature increases the rate of production of SO3 and increases the yield of SO3. So when we talk about the rate, we say that at higher pressure, the particles are closer now. So the particles move closer because the volume is decreased, right? We say and more particles are present per unit volume. So more particles are present per unit volume. And as a result, so their frequency of successful collision increases. So their collision frequency increases and when they collide more per unit second, they make more product. When we talk about the yield, we notice that on the left hand side, there are three gaseous moles and on the product side, there are only two gaseous moles. So we notice that according to the Le Chatelier's principle, higher pressure favors the side of equilibrium, the side of equilibrium with less gaseous moles. So we need to mention the idea of gaseous moles because otherwise solids and liquids would also be considered which they are not. So equilibrium with less gaseous moles is favored. So equilibrium moves towards the right side, which means more product is obtained. Now this question says the graph shows how the concentration of all three species in the system change with time. For a typical reaction mixture, it means we are talking about the rate. The gradient of all three lines decrease with time and then level off in this dynamic equilibrium. Explain why gradients of SO2 and O2 lines decrease with time. So the gradient actually refers to the rate, which means the rate decreases. So we can say that SO2 and O2 are reactants. And so they are used up their concentration obviously decreases. That's why the graph is falling. So they are used up, but as their amount decreases, the rate also decreases because the rate depends upon the concentration of reactant particles. So as their amount decreases, the rate also decreases. Part two is asking, explain why all three lines become horizontal. So they become horizontal, which means the concentration is becoming constant. And that happens at equilibrium. So we say the concentration become constant, which means the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of reverse reaction. And that is when we say the equilibrium is established. Next part says, suggest a reason why the initial gradient of SO2 line is deeper than that of the O2 line. You can notice that from a red line, I'm drawing the gradient of the SO2 line and with a blue pen, I will be drawing the gradient of the O2 line the line for O2 is less deeper. So we say SO2 and O2 react in a ratio of 2 is to 1. 
So react in a two is to one ratio. More moles of SO2 are used up to make the SO3 to make the product. You can see that SO2 is required more. So used up to make product. So it is used up quicker. SO2 will be used up quicker while O2 will be reacted, will be produced a little less quicker. Moving on, it says two mole of SO2 and two mole of O2 are sealed in a container with a suitable catalyst at a constant temperature and pressure. So I'm writing two mole underneath both the reactants. The resulting equilibrium mixture contains 1.98 moles of SO3 gas. It means my product has an amount of 1.98 moles. That is a product that has been produced. I can guarantee you some reactant is used up, right? So moving on, we say, write the expression for the equilibrium constant. So we put the product with the ratio in a power form as an exponent and the reactant is also in square bracket with the exponents of their mole ratios. The next part says calculate the amount in moles of SO2 and O2 in the equilibrium mixture. Now you can notice that SO2 and SO3 have a 1 is to 1 ratio. So to make 1.98 mole SO3 we can use exactly the same amount of SO2. So 1.98 mole SO2 was used up and 0 0.02 was left behind. But between SO3 and oxygen, the ratio wasn't 2 is to 2, the ratio is different. So let's write that between SO3 and O2, the ratio was 1.98 to x. And from the equation, we know that the ratio is 2 is to 1. So how much oxygen was used up? You can easily find that by dividing 1.98 by 2. So I will say 1.98 should be divided by a 2 to find the number of mole of oxygen which is equal to 0 0.99 mole. So let me write that 0 0.99 mole oxygen was used up and when 0.99 mole oxygen was used up how much was left behind? We do that and we get to know that it is 1.01. That is the amount of oxygen that should have been left behind. Now this part says find the value of Kc. So Kc is equal to number of moles divided by the volume because it's not just about the moles, it's the concentration. So mole divided by volume should have been used and the squares remain the same place. Sulfur dioxide was at a mole value of 1.98 divided by 40 decimeter cube. Sulfur, sorry, sulfur trioxide was 1.98. Sulfur dioxide was 0 0.02 divided by 40 times square. And oxygen was 1.01 divided by 40 square. The answer after calculating turns out to be 3.882 exponent 5. And when we find the value of the units, we get to know that it is mole per decimeter cube because of SO3 times a square. The denominator should have moles decimeter cube times a square because of SO2 and mole per decimeter cube times like single power one because of the oxygen. We cancel the units and we get to note the units are mole inverse decimeter cube. So this is how we find the units. Let's do this question. It says when a sample of butane is heated to 373 Kelvin in the presence of a catalyst and allowed to reach equilibrium to the, follow the following reaction occurs. You can see that butane, which is an alkane, is in an equilibrium with methyl propane. It is by the way 2-methyl propane when you draw the structure. It's an exothermic reaction. Stay and explain the effect on the composition of this equilibrium mixture when the temperature is increased. It's an exothermic reaction, so exotil should be a good mnemonic to help you here. Since the forward reaction is exothermic, the reverse reaction is going to be endothermic. And when you're releasing the heat, when you're providing heat, the reaction, the reaction will go backwards. As the temperature is increased, equilibrium will 
shift towards the left side and then you have to explain why is it moving towards the left so you will mention that increase in temperature favors the endothermic you can say side reaction whatever I'm writing reaction so increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction which is reverse don't forget to mention that they have asked about composition so you will mention that due to this more butane will be present and less methyl propane would be present in the equilibrium mixture now moving on this question says one mole of butane gas was added to a one decimeter cube closed system which means one mole butane was there and the graph of butane is decreasing while the graph of methyl propane being a product is increasing let me label that that this falling graph defines butane and the graph which shows an increasing value should be methyl propane because that is our product you can notice that the lines are becoming horizontal which means the equilibrium is established label the graph with a T to show the time taken to reach the dynamic equilibrium we will notice that when the lines are becoming horizontal this is where I'll mark the red arrow to show that the equilibrium is established right here this means the rate of forward is equal to the rate of reverse use the graph to find the values now so we can notice that the graph which was the falling graph shows butane so butane was 0 0.30 moles and methyl propane was constant at 0 0.70 moles so butane had a value of 0 0.30 moles in the equilibrium mixture and methyl propane was 0 0.70 mole you can notice that the equation mentions 1 is to 1 ratio so when the question is concerned about the KC expression KC is equals to the product which is methyl propane so let me show you the formula again this is how it's written CH3 with a bracket twice CH CH3 and the reactant was butane butane was written as CH3 then CH2 twice and then again CH3 again in square brackets no exponents because it was 1 is to 1 ratio we find the value of KC by using the values of concentration we just found out you can notice that the decimeter cube was just one decimeter cube volume so there's no point in dividing it by one there was no exponent either so we can simply find the value of KC at two no let me solve that again yeah so it was turned out to be 2.33 because it was uh, rounded off to a 2.33 moles and then when you find the units we get to know that both are mole per decimeter cube numerator and denominator when we cancel that we get to know that there are no units so this is how we solve the KC and units of various questions